uh, dear friends, hello, hello, hello. Can you imagine if I tell you that we will meet a person who is, who is? Coca-Cola call him dynamite. And I think Coca-Cola dynamite itself already. Microsoft call him outstanding. New York life phenomenon, phenomenous. So it's the only person ever compete in four Winter Olympic Games. Maybe this person is 120 years old, I don't know, four times in Olympic Games. And you know that Olympic Games is not very often. Uh, it is Ruben Gonzalez, absolutely unique person. Hello, dear Ruben. Olga, how are you? Great to be here. Great to be with you. Uh, you know, since uh, you are such a really, really powerful person, maybe the person like that uh, doesn't exist in the world anymore, and I'm sure he, he doesn't <sighs> exist. I, since we have that luxury opportunity to meet you, my first question to you. You wrote uh, a book. You are the author of the book, and you are a famous speaker for big companies. Uh, your book is called Unstoppable. And as I can see by this Olympic and the, by the thing that you're doing luge, even a lot of people don't know what is this sport about. Tell me, please, how is it possible to be in the Olympic Games four times? Is it ever possible? Because for me, it's impossible. <laughs> I, when I was 20, I always had the Olympic dream ever since I was a little boy, but I'm not a great athlete. I'm not fast, right? And so I was always the last one picked for sports in school. So I didn't believe it was possible. When I was 21 years old, I'm watching the, the uh, 1984 Sarajevo Winter Olympic Games. And I saw this little figure skater, Scott Hamilton, a tiny little guy. He wins the gold medal and he gave me hope. I thought if that little guy can win, I can at least play. I will be in the next ones no matter what. I just have to find the sport. <laughs> now, I lived in Houston, Texas. Houston is very hot and humid, no ice, okay? Uh, only ice is in your drinks. And so I picked the luge. The luge is a little sled. You go down the, uh, the, the, the bobsled track, and uh, the, uh, the, the main track in Russia is the one in Segulda in, in, uh, in Latvia, right? And so you train uh, on this track. You're going 140 kilometers per hour, pulling six Gs on some of the curves. It's very dangerous and very difficult to learn. But uh, my nickname in high school was Bulldog because I was always very tenacious, very uh, never quit personality. So I thought this one is good for me because... Uh, Looks like a lot of broken bones, maybe be a lot of quitters. I won't quit. I'll make it to the top on the attrition rate, right? And so I went um, knowing it would be tough. And before I went, and the track in the U.S. was in Lake Placid in New York. Before I went, I had to prepare myself mentally, right? And so I thought myself, what will I do if, uh, you know, if I break my leg or if I break a bone? Because they told me, you're going to get hurt a lot. And I and so I thought, well, I've broken bones before. You know, you wear a cast 40 days later, it's healed and it's stronger than before. So when you think about it, a broken bone is a temporary inconvenience, right? So I had prepared myself mentally. You always have to prepare for the worst, but hope for the best, right? And, uh, and I did break a few bones, but I was ready mentally for it. I had a plan. Uh, the other guys, they got hurt. They didn't even break anything and they would quit because they, they thought it was going to be easy, right? Uh, success is tough. Okay, it's going to take everything you have, but you have what it takes. If it's in your heart, you know, you have what it takes. You just have to work hard. So I went to Lake Placid and four years and a few broken bones later, I made the Calgary Olympics 1988. And then I kept competing and I made the um, uh, competed in the Albertville in France, Albertville in 1992. And then I quit. I wanted to do other things. Right. And I quit for seven years. And my coach, he uh, called me again and he convinced me to come back. And he says, come on, you must come back. Salt Lake City Olympics will be the best. U.S. Olympic spirit is crazy. You, you'll regret it if you don't come back. And I told him, I will only come back if my, if my brother comes, okay? Because we have five years. Maybe he can learn the sport. Maybe he can break into the top 50 in the world. He always had to be in the top 50 to compete. Uh, who knows? Maybe he can do it. And well, how old is he? I told him he's 30 years old. He goes, 30 years old? Are you crazy? <laughs> I said, oh, you have to see this guy. He's incredible. You know, he's got a great, he, he's mentally tough. So he went and he caught the dream. He started training too. And we made Olympic history. First time two brothers compete against each other in the luge, right? 
quit again, right? I started writing books and I started uh, speaking professionally. And for six years, six, seven years, I was building my business. And after six or seven years, business was, was good. And I started getting bored again, right? I like a challenge. <laughs> so I thought, you know, no one has ever competed in four Winter Olympics in four different decades, right? I have 80s, 90s, 2000s, 2010 is Vancouver. That will be four different decades, right? I thought that's good. You know, that might be good for business, right? <laughs> Another record. And so I started competing again. Everybody, I was 47 at the, uh, at the uh, Vancouver Olympics. Everybody thought I was a coach. Every day, somebody, oh, what are you coaching? No, I'm, a, I'm an athlete. Ah, come on, what are you coaching? They didn't believe me, right? Uh, but, um, but, but when they saw that I was uh, really, you know, an athlete, they got excited. They said, hey, do it for the old guys, okay? Because <laughs> we want to be competing too. So uh, whenever I speak to a group, my goal is to do for them what that figure skater did for me, right? To take their excuses away. Everybody allows fear of failure and fear of the unknown to hold them back, right? And those are two ghosts. If you do what you fear, nine times out of 10, you realize that, you know, oh, that was not so bad. You know, the fear disappears. The fear is here. It's negative visualization. That's what it is. And so if you face your fears, you discover that you, you, you can do it, right? And so that's what I try to do through my presentations, inspire other people to go for it in life. You only live once, you know, let's, let's go for it. Ruben, you know, it sounds like a legendary person because really being 47 in the sport that is so dangerous when you can break your bones and this bobsleigh, I don't know why, uh, I was always watching bobsleigh because you know, it's in a way that nothing depends from you. For me, it looked like that because you just go like a bullet, like a rocket, wheel, 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 you know? And I was thinking, what kind of sport that is? How these coaches put these poor guys when nothing depends from them? And maybe they will break their head because I think the speed can be 100 kilometers for this luge, yeah? Oh, yeah, 140 sometimes. Depends on the track. But... Um... You're driving, okay? When you watch this on TV, <laughs> they think all we do is hold on and pray, right? Yeah. <laughs> but no, we're making corrections the whole way down to have the perfect line that will give you the best time, right? It's the only sport, the luge is the only sport that is timed to the one thousandths of a second. One thousandths, okay? Even the 100 meter dash in 100 meters in the Olympics is one one hundredth of a second, right? But we're one one thousand. Everything counts. How we prepare the sled, how we drive, even our breathing, okay? If you hold your breath, a, a lose run takes about one minute. If you hold your breath, which is easy to do if you're scared to death, <laughs> yeah. uh, you're slower, okay? You're slow because you're tight, right? And you have to be relaxed. In any sport, you need to be relaxed so, so you can be fluid and so you can, you know, uh, have faster reaction time. And so they teach us to exhale at the entrance and exit of every curve. <sighs> at first, I couldn't do it past two curves, right? I'd get scared. And then as I got more experience, I started doing it. And if you do that, then you're able to relax more. And, they, and then once you can do that, they say, okay, now try to smile. Try to go the whole way with a soft smile in your mouth, okay? Not, not this smile, okay? A soft smile. Because if you can relax your jaw, right? And you relax your hands, which that's what they tell sprinters too. Soft hands, soft mouth, all right? That makes you faster. And so that's the next step. And, and you prepare lots of mental uh, preparation uh, to, to learn, right? It's, it's a little bit like Formula One, where the person that has the best, you know, lines is going to win, right? And then consistency is important too, okay? Now, all these things I'm saying are true in life too, okay? If you're making a sales call, right? Or, or, or you're proposing to somebody to marry you, you better not be tight. You better be loose and relaxed, right? Otherwise, everybody gets nervous and nothing's going to happen. <laughs> so, um, I never, to... proposed, I never proposed anybody to get married to me, actually, vice versa. Uh, somebody else was doing that for me. But I can imagine definitely in work, in business, uh, in relationship, if you are very afraid and you're full of fears and you cannot breathe, nobody will be attracted by your behavior because it is the sign that you're uh, afraid. 
uh, honestly, I will tell you, I'm very much shocked because I did uh, four movies about Olympic champions. Uh, I'm director and producer of the movies. And I'm no sure kidding. that you did it four times and you were 47. It's, uh, it's really very dangerous. And thanks God that you didn't break your head, your leg, <laughs> any bones. <laughs> My next question to you, uh, you know, um, Okay, this secrets, let's say a few secrets that we can use in business. Um, okay, you did it, uh, you were already 21, which is already very late to be in the Olympic Games when you start doing that. Uh, and a lot of people, they say, uh, we're afraid to do something because we are old or we never did it. How we can use this, your secret in life and in business? What do you think? Yeah, young people think they're too young. And old people think they're too old. Everybody can come up with an excuse, right? Uh, if you're scared, any excuse will do, right? But um, the best time is now. It doesn't matter if you're old or young or middle, right? Now, the person that, that takes advantage, that, that takes action right now is going to be ahead of everybody that's still waiting, okay? You, it's, um, it's so important. And you um, people sometimes ask me, you know, what's... What if you don't know what your dream is? Well, what was your dream when you were 12 years old, when you were 10 years old? Maybe that will direct you towards an industry, right? That where you would be happy to work in, right? Maybe you wanted to be an NBA player, but you're 50 years old now and you're short, right? You're not going to play basketball, okay, in the NBA. But maybe you can be a coach for your church team. Maybe you can sell basketballs. Maybe you can be work at the front office of your local basketball professional team. And now you're surrounded in an environment where that's your dream and, and you'd, you'd be happier, right? So um, you have to, um, I tell people, you know, you have to dedicate yourself to the pursuit of your dream and that's how you make uh, your life an adventure, right? When coach told me, when he was trying to talk me into coming back and he said, you're going to regret it. First, he called me. He's this Austrian coach, three-time world champion. It's like if Michael Jordan is teaching you basketball, right? And um, he calls me the first time, Ruben, you must come back and lose knees Argentina because I was the Argentina team. I said, coach, thanks, but no thanks. I got a family now. I'm done. Thanks for nothing. I hung up on him. I was so happy. First time I hung up on him in my life. Right? <laughs> he calls back, right? He's a winner. He doesn't take no for an answer, right? He goes, Ruben, you know, uh, Salt Lake City will be amazing, right? If you, you know, you regret it if you miss it. Oh, I don't want to regret anything in life, right? And so now, I said, thanks, but no thanks. <sighs> hung up again. But that time it hurt, right? And thank God he called again. He said, I got a deal for you, you know, and uh, you, I'll give you free training two weeks in Calgary, Canada. And that's when I told him, I will only go if my brother goes. He's seen me go to two Olympics. I've seen the look in his eyes. He's mentally tough. He can do it. And then and it worked, right? But I don't want to miss anything. When I was a teenager, I remember I read this book and I'm a reader, okay? Let me show you. Let me show you some stuff here. This is my office. See, look, I, I am a student of success, okay? I've read 10 times, not 10, three times as many as these books, okay? On how to be better, how to yeah, this, uh, be the uh, best Ruben like, that I can be. Uh, this office looks really like an office of a very young guy who is very curious about life, who is studying, who is investigating. It's more looks like really somebody very, very young, like a student. And that is bravo to you, Ruben. I'm a student, you know, there's a saying here in the States, you know, it's like plants, right? If, uh, if you're green, you know, if you're still growing, right? But if you're ripe, you're, you're going to start rotting, right? <laughs> I am green, baby. I'm, I'm always learning, right? I'm always learning. Um, and let me show you here. Since, oh, can you still see me? Yes, absolutely. I can okay. See. When I decided I wanted to do the luge, I didn't even know where the track was, okay? And so I wrote Sports Illustrated a letter, Sports Illustrated the magazine. I thought they've got, they have to know, right? It's their job to know. And they sent me this picture of a guy on a luge. And I put the picture on inside this frame and I put it right in front of my room, in my bed, right in front of my bed, in my bedroom. First person I saw in the morning when I woke up was the luge man, right? He reminded me, I'm training for the Olympics. I have to eat right. I have to hang around winners, listen to good audios, read good books, uh, exercise, right? And at night, before I shut off the lights, last person I saw every night was the luge man, right? And so what do you think I dreamt about? I dreamt about the Olympics, the luge. He kept me going. You have to keep your goals in front of you, right? 
so you don't forget them because otherwise life happens, right? Life happens and then six months go by, a year goes by, 18 months go by and then you think, oh my gosh, I was training for the Olympics and I totally forgot. I mean, that it happens. So you have to p- keep them in front. My office is filled with Olympic stuff and, and, and uh, memorabilia and things from, you know, uh, to, to keep me going, to keep me going, right? Uh, things like this, look, play like a champion today, right? I, I can see that from my desk, right? Every morning right? when I sit down. And, and so that helps fuel my, my strength, right? And, uh, and that's things that anybody can do. I'm not special. I'm just a regular guy that got to do some pretty fun crazy things because I followed some success principles that I learned from the books, right? And success principles, by definition, they're a set of rules that work for anyone, anywhere, anytime, right? It just helps you find, reach that goal faster. And so I believe that 90% of success is who you associate with who you hang around with. Uh, I tell people, you have to find somebody that's already done what you want to do, right? That's your coach. That's your guide. That's your mentor, right? Find somebody that's already done it and then find several people that have already done it and then spend all your time with them because you will pick up their habits and before long, you'll automatically start doing the things that you need to do to reach the dream. And if you have a question, they'll help you. When I... Um, I used to sell copiers in Houston, copying machines, like Xerox machines. Yeah. And I did that for years. And then right before the Salt Lake City Olympics, 2002, a little boy in my, in, in my neighborhood, uh, fifth grade boy, he said, uh, Ruben, when you come back from the Olympics, will you be my show and tell project in school? Show and tell is like, uh, it's a day where they tell all the children, okay, bring something from home, right? You know, uh, bring a, bring this, anything, a stapler or anything. And then you're going to go up on in the front and tell us about it, right? Tell a story about it. Maybe your favorite toy, just to teach them how to speak, right? And how to speak in front of people. And so I thought, sure, why not? And so I took the sled, right? This is my, one of my sleds. I took the helmet. I took the Olympic torch because I was a torch bearer. And I thought, I'm going to win. Finally going to win a gold medal against these kids, right? And show and tell. I was so happy. <laughs> and so I go to the school. The principal takes me to the cafeteria, right? And uh, he, they called it the auditorium. And there's 200 kids sitting in the floor. And he said, you got 45 minutes. Go ahead. And I thought I was going to die, okay? Because believe it or not, I'm a shy guy. I get, I'm, I'm a very introverted person. But when it comes time to talk about personal development, Olympics. It's like Clark Kent becomes Superman, right? For a few minutes, right? And so I, when I saw all those kids, I panicked and the door looked so inviting. I thought, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? And I said a prayer. I said, God, what do I do? And what I felt I needed to do, and, and let's get this straight. I never heard God uh, talk to me, okay? <laughs> but he has put thoughts in my mind and he's put feelings in my heart, right? And what I felt I needed to do was just tell the kids your story and give them some tips to help them reach their dream, right? And I did. And afterwards, the, the teachers they surrounded me and said, what do we have to do to get you to stick around another hour? We'll bring the fourth graders. They need to hear this too. Oh, bring them on. That was actually kind of fun. That's when I discovered that I, I didn't die speaking in front of people. And in fact, I enjoyed it, right? I, it was a fear that was here, but I didn't know. I didn't know I had this gift. And everybody's like that. Do you understand? Ruben, you know, uh, I want to tell that uh, really that is amazing that, you know, being a, an Olympic guy, a sport guy, because for you, it might be boring, you know, to live normal life, even to give speeches, even to write books, because you are very energetic and you need these high goals and you like sport, you know. So in a way, it's interesting how you put all this energy that you experienced, you are putting it now to help people. And that is amazing about what you are doing because not everybody can try luge just by because by the, the physical situation and not everybody has that courage to do it four times, especially when you are 47. You know, unfortunately, in many countries, when you are 40, it's considered to be very old, almost like the end of the life. It's only in Japan yeah. people live till 95 and 40 is like a teenager. <laughs> That's why I think what you are doing, the greatest thing about that, that you pack all that knowledge and all this fear and all these hesitations into program 
that can be used by other people, which I think is very re rewarding. That's why they call you dynamite. You know, that in a way it's dynamite. As my last question to you, uh, I hope that we will see each other again because you gave me such a big spirit. Oh, yeah. Of, uh, you know, of everything. Like, I like what you said. You should find somebody, a mentor whom you can talk, who can inspire, who can guide you in a way. Then you can come back to your things, to your, you know, buttons. You can come to your ships, whatever, but you need to be, to have somebody. In this time of resilience, uh, you know, pandemic and everything, uh, you know, uh, when you become in this great mood, then you listen to the news, then you see maybe somebody, God forbid, from your friends died or something happened, you know, after this high spirit, again, you become low. Mostly it's happening after the news, after watching TV, because all the aura around is very, very dramatic and depressing how to put it back, how to put this, because now you really, you sound and look like a teenager who is curious, who, who is full of power, who likes what he's doing. How to put this spirit back when it's disappearing? First of all, don't watch the news, okay? Uh, seriously, I, I have uh, never bought the newspaper. Uh, we've never had a, a newspaper uh, subscription in my house ever. Okay. We never watch the news. I hardly ever watch TV anyways. I like inspirational movies, but not, not normal TV. The news, the media makes money when the ratings are high. Okay. When the ratings are high, the way to get your ratings are high are two ways, make you mad and make you scared. If you're mad and scared, you're going to watch more. Right. And, and think about it, being mad and being scared, doesn't help you reach your goals. Doesn't help you be better at work. So stay away from that. I tell, when I speak to salespeople, I tell them, hey, stop watching the news, stop reading the paper, but you can buy a subscription for your, for your competitor. <laughs> Let him get depressed. <laughs> you focus on what you need to do in the next 15 minutes to move your business forward, okay? Um, I started the luge when I was 21. Most people start when they're eight, nine, 10 years old. Little kids, they're not afraid of that, right? They build them up slowly over 10 years. Me, they rushed me through. And for 25 years, I was scared. I was white knuckles, okay, the whole way down. I hated it. But I looked at the luge at, as the vehicle to help me reach my dream, okay? Um, so I didn't focus on the luge. I focused on the Olympics. That gave me the power, the strength, right? So your focus determines your your, um, uh, your experience. When I started training for Vancouver, the last one, a couple of years before Vancouver, one of the coaches said, I can't believe you're still scared after all these years. What's going on in your head when you're going down the slide, you know, we're sliding. And I told him, man, as I see those walls going faster and faster, I get tighter and tighter by the bottom of the track. I'm tight. I can't believe I can even drive. He said, luge is not about speed. It's about who has the best time. Okay. You could be the fastest one, but if you crash at the end, you lost the race. So you need to stop looking at those walls. Okay. Be like a horse, right? Like this and, and focus on a spot in 30 feet, 30 yards, um, 30 feet, that'll be 10 meters in front of you. And your thinking needs to be, what do I need to do in every section of every curve to, to, to assure I will have the best time. If you do that, the fear will disappear. That night, I took about 100 mind runs, right? Visualization runs like this, right? Next day, I, I went down and the fear was gone. It didn't reduce, it disappeared, it was crazy. Changing the focus changes the experience. Don't focus on the economy, don't focus on COVID, don't focus on the news. That will just take you down. Let your comp competition do that. You focus on what do I need to do in the next 15 minutes? Who do I need to call? Maybe, maybe somebody's not buying right now what I sell, but let's strengthen the relationship so when they are buying, I'm, on the, I'm the first one they're gonna call, right? Who do I need to talk to to build the business forward? And if you do that, you'll be okay and you'll pass the competition. And afterwards, you know what everybody will say? Ah, you were lucky. <laughs> yeah, I was lucky I did what you weren't willing to do. <laughs> Ruben, you know, that is really amazing because it is sounds simple, but it is not simple. I know it's not simple because what you're saying, it's about laser focus. It's not about focus, it's about laser focus. And I know you're giving speeches on the topic, how to be laser focused for big corporations and companies, but actually that is absolutely right. I like that when you were sleeping, you were imagining 1000 times this, you know, road, that's why yeah. the fear disappeared. But this is really 
very revolutionary and very simple, but very difficult at the same time to do like that. It's, it, yeah, it's simple, but not easy. Success is simple, but it's not easy. Um, it's going to take everything you have. You have to be, like you said, focused. Uh, you have to, successful people think and talk about what they want. Average people and unsuccessful people think about and talk about what they don't want. Whatever you think about and talk about gets bigger in your life. So if you're always talking about your dream, you want to become known for your dream. If people start calling you a fanatic, when an average person, and that's 80% of the people out there, okay? When an average person calls you a fanatic, that's a compliment. That means in our, for us, that means yeah, I'm a little focused. That's it, right? And if your focus is long-term, like in the Olympics, it's four years, right? A long-term focus and a long-term dream helps you uh, make good decisions today, right? The longer away your, your, your focus is, right? Then the better for decisions of today. If all you think about is what's going to be pleasing for me today, then you're never going to get any. Right. You got to be thinking, is this going to be get me when somebody offered me a piece of cake, beautiful chocolate cake, oh, moist, <sighs> dripping with with sugar and it was so good. Right. I would think I, I, I didn't even it was a, it, it was a, a like a knee jerk reaction. Right. I would think, is that cake getting me closer or further from the Olympics? Cake, Olympics, cake. I think I'll take the Olympics. See. And so you make that question automatic all the time. If I do this, am I going to get closer to my dream or not? If not, throw it out. It's... I will say that bravissimo, bravo. I agree with all these companies. I will repeat, phenomenous, outstanding, dynamic. Uh, you know, I think even a dead person will wake up after listening to Ruben Gonzalez because his combination of energy wise and resilience and also consistency and i think these ah. qualities no really together that make who is ruben gonzalez i will be dreaming on a guy shimas in japanese to invite you one time again i would like yeah. to analyze everything you said because it is very concise and i think it is a bible for any olympic champion for any young businessman or for any person who want to be strong young and to find one goal, goal and to reach it. Really, thank you so much. I enjoyed so much, Ruben. It was big pleasure. And you are very, very young. I think you can go to the fifth Olympics. I'm sure you will win uh, maybe. with this laser focus. And <laughs> I love your passion. I love your passion. That's, that tells people that you believe, right? They Everybody you know, has a subconscious, eh, does she believe or not? You believe because you're passionate. Right. Don't be afraid to be passionate, people. OK, because that <laughs> means you believe. <laughs> Thank you so much. I really enjoyed so much. You're Superman, Spider-Man, Batman. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. My pleasure.